I spent way too much money on a video for the dumbest reason. I tried to teach a dog how to pop a shackers. That failed dismally. So my foot's fucked. That's cool. Check out this. Bloody hurts. Just imagine a bung foot. You ready? Somewhere on the sea. Welcome to chapter 133, perhaps, not sure, of uh, Nice Truths of a Fluorescent Peasant. How are we all doing? Hope you guys have had a ripping week. Hope you've, I hope you've just absolutely had a, had a blinder, had a perla, as my dad would say, of a week. Because I haven't, you know, it's been okay, but I hope... You know, it makes me happy at least if you're listening to this going, Luke, I've had a bloody rip snorter. Thank you very much. And that makes me happy. So I hope you guys have gone out there this week, got it done. Whatever you wanted to get done, hope you completed it. 100% A to B. Hope you got that shit completo. I don't know what I'm talking about. Guys, the point is, uh, you know, I I've had an okay week and that's fine. It's fine to have okay weeks. That's life. And, um, by the way, before we get started, I'm definitely running out of ways to say more miles of a white guy. Niche truths of a fluorescent peasant. Not my best work, really. Uh, I thought it fluorescent and peasant rhymed until I said it out loud. It doesn't. Fluorescent and peasant does, but it's a near rhyme. It's close. Um... But that's okay. So yeah, if you guys want to send me other ways to say memoirs of a white guy, I'm absolutely scrambling at the bottom of the barrel. Like, I'm dipping my hand in. I can't feel any more shit that I can use. So, you know, if you guys want to help me fill up that barrel, I'm running out of synonyms. So, yeah, man. Uh, maybe I'm going to have to start replacing that intro with, like, I don't know, racking popular TV shows or something. Like, next week, I might have to come in and, like, you know, <clears throat> so no one told your life was gonna be this way. <laughs> your jobs are joking around. You know, would that be better? Probably not. It, it sounds, you know, maybe definitely not with me singing it. Um, or maybe, like, um, what's, like, another good, good TV show? Oh, one of my favorites of all time. So if I was, like, all right. <laughs> so you see me people walking down the street with a different point of view or something and I said hey hey what a wonderful kind of day and then I just do the friends clap because <laughs> you can live to work and play hey and get along with each other you gotta listen to the heart you guys get the idea it's Arthur man absolute tune I've realized recently that for someone who has absolutely, I would say zero to negative singing ability. I sing a lot on this podcast. I have a lot of unearned singing confidence. I don't know where it came from. Um, maybe just like it's a, it's a real situation of lack of fucks, um, lack of criticism over the years. Maybe if, if I was criticized a little bit more on my horrific vocal noises that I produce, well, I, I wouldn't even call it singing. I'm just going to call it uh, vocal ambience, because, I, I, yeah, maybe that's what it is, I, I don't think anyone's ever been like, dude, shut up, you, you can't sing, you know, so maybe if it's just one, one person wants to leave them in the comments, not everyone, one person will send a message, okay, maybe just like, hey Luke, you can't sing, or maybe, if you think I can sing, you know, you're lying, so, I don't know, I sing a lot, but yeah, let me know what you guys think the new intro to this podcast should be. I just, all because all I can picture is me at episode 500 or something, like in years to come when I'm still knocking out this podcast like a bloody champion. Um, all, all I can see by then is just like me just running out of ways to say man, Miles Wike. I'm just going like, welcome to uh, uh, earthly scientific uh you know, recollections of a, you know, I've already done shit like that. So the point is, I just, I don't know where to go from here. So maybe I need to start a new intro format. I don't want to do that. I like the current format. I'm just running out of ways to say it. Or maybe I go back to the start and we start recycling some of the old ones. But you know, that's, that's lazy content. So I don't know, guys, help me get out of this pickle. Um, because yeah, the barrel's running low. Now, I hope you guys have had a good week. Um, 
Yeah, my week was weird. Okay, here's like the main things I did this week. Uh, main thing, I, I spent way too much money on a video for the dumbest reason, which I'll get into in a sec. Stupid amounts. I tried to teach a dog how to pop a shackers. That failed dismally. So I was like, well, this week sucks already. Um, I found out afterwards. Well, not really. I thought about it afterwards. I was like, oh, dogs don't have fingers. Here's me getting mad at this dog. I was like, because at first I was like, pound it out, bro. And then I realized I was in public telling a dog to pound it out with me. And I was like, that's not a good look. That's not good branding. You know, I don't need that. I don't need dog fucker as kind of like my vibe. So I was like, you know what? I'll just teach it to pop a shack. It's more more PG. So I was just like, you know, it's still edgy because, you know, it's, it's shackers and it's, it's cool and tough and it shows that you, you know, have a certain edge to your personality if you do it. Um, so yeah, I was just like trying to teach this dog how to pop a shackers for far too long before I realized, oh, dogs have paws, they can't pop shacks. I should have kept trying to get the dog to fist bump me. That would have been better. So, I mean, I hope, that, that's why I hope your week's been better than mine. I hope, I hope for, for, for your sake that you didn't spend five to ten minutes trying to teach a dog how to, how to shack. Because that's kind of where I'm at in my life. Um, man, my feet, my foot's fucked. That's cool. Um, check out this. Check out this. Hang on. If you're watching the video, I'll, I'll chuck my foot up. Hang on. It bloody hurts. And if you're listening to it, just imagine a bung foot. You ready? Look at that. Oh, I got some tape on it. Boom. I got the bungest foot in the game. My foot, is, it's, it's, it's my heel. I don't know what happened to it. My heel just started hurting. And it's concerned me for a few reasons. reasons. Reason number one is not that I do it often, but it's more like now I don't have the option if I wanted to, you know, use some heelys right now and rip it in the, an efficient shoe, which has a has a you know, a, it's like a rollerblade shoe. If you don't know what heelys are, you're missing out, my friend. But it's like a shoe with a with a wheel in the bottom, and you just kind of rip it on your heels as you go down the street. Commonly used by six year olds, and usually have flames on the side. But you can buy um, adult heelys. And look, I haven't done. I've, I probably haven't heelied in about a decade. But it's more just like, you know, probably more than a decade actually. It might be, it might be getting getting close to twelve to fourteen years now since my last Healy sesh. But the point is, I've got a bung heel now, and I'm really struggling to walk on it even this week. So healing is just out of the question, and that's not a good situation. I like to live my life, and it's something I've always strived to live my life by: is always be ready for a Healy sesh. Like this week, if someone had been like, put a gun to my head and been like, Luke, you, I'm going to shoot you unless you can heal me comfortably. I'd be like, well, you're going to have to shoot me then because this is going to be bloody uncomfortable when I start healing right now. I'm going to be in, in severe amounts of pain. So, I don't know. That, that, that's kind of rocked me a bit. I'm a little bit rattled by the fact that if someone threw a pair of rollerblades or heelys at me right now, I just wouldn't be able to participate. And... I don't know. I, I think you can probably tell that I, I, that actually makes me a little stressed. I keep rollerblades in my car, the boot of my car, twenty four seven. If you don't know, it's just like a. I would say it's a fairly common known fact about me by now between my friends. I think I've only mentioned it a few times in content because it's not something I want to brag about, even though it is cool. Um, yeah, I just like I do keep rollerblades in my car because you never know when you're gonna need a blade, and I live my life you know, one blade at a time, and I never predict my next blade, I, sometimes, you know, you can't choose the blade life, the blade life chooses you, so, um, yeah, I've got a bung foot, so I'm pretty much out of action on any roller sports, I, I don't even know of how long, uh, Meg, who's a remedial um, uh, therapist, she strapped it up this morning, um, bloody, not the first time we've strapped something on any, <laughs> I had to, you know, it was there. It was, uh, it was like, it was like a T-ball, you know? Um, anyway, <laughs> so yeah, my foot hurts. I actually am in a lot of pain. I'm so tired, man. This ba these bachelor videos, not going to lie. I've only done two episodes. I've been editing the third one. It takes it out of me. It's so draining. It they take like two to three days to like to turn around. Like it, they take about an hour and forty minutes to film, and that's just to actually film while the cameras on. Not to mention the 
you know, getting, you know, Meg and I in the same place together or Lewis or whoever I'm doing it with and setting it up and packing all the equipment down. It's just like a, man, it's, it's actually like, I've been super busy. Um, but yeah, that's cool. I mean, my, my channel's grown heaps, which is cool. So if you're new to this channel in the last week or so, hey, welcome aboard. Thanks for checking out the podcast. And um, yeah, it's cool. And I'm, and I, it's definitely worth it. It's just taking its toll, uh, which is why there was no podcast last week. So I apologize for that. I literally did not even have a chance last week to, to work for an hour. Like I was going to bed at 3 a.m. every night, waking up early and just... By the end, I think I received a comment and I, like there was comments from people in my personal life, like my family and stuff that were like, you look like shit. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> thank you. I, I do. Um, but yeah, there was a comment. <laughs> I don't know. I forget what it said. It was like under one of my videos and it just pretty much said like, uh, it was along the lines of like, you look just trash. It was something, it was, it was so rude because it was like, it was from a girl. It was like, I usually find you quite attractive, but recently, <laughs> like, it was brutal. It was like, recently, you look like you haven't slept and you look like trash. They weren't even going at humor. You know those YouTube... Th- th- there's a few type of YouTube comments. There's, I'm clearly joking. There's, I'm the dumbest person on earth and I can't spell. Um, I get a lot of those. And then there's, like, constructive criticism that's not really constructive and it's just feedback. And you can take... Some people just throw out their thoughts on the internet. Like, I'll just get shit. Like, it was something along the lines of like, wow, I used to find you quite attractive. But recently, I, you've, I've caught you slipping. You look like you haven't slept. Uh, she was talking about the bags under my eyes. It was just like, so real. I, and, and it was something that I've been feeling too. I was like, yeah, I know. I'm aware of it. I see myself in the mirror every day. She's right. I haven't slept, but fucking hell. Just ease up. So, um, anyway, and now I've got a bung foot to go with my fucked head. So that's good. Hope you guys are having, having a better week. <laughs> but other than that, I'm actually pretty good, man. I'm uh, super excited. My, my channel's been pumping and the Bachelor videos have been going well. But, um, yeah, I do need to tell you guys the story of how I spent $293. That's AU, by the way. So, which is, you know, the currency we, most of us use. Um, $293 on the dumbest shit ever for you guys. Now... Here's how it goes. So, we're filming... Meg and I will film in Bachelor Review Episode 3. I think it was on Sunday. And this is why it's taken me so long to turn around this episode. Because everything went wrong. So, Sunday night, I was super tired. I'd been editing all day to get the second episode up. We get the second episode up. I had a 15-minute break between posting. And I was like, alright, back at it. Fuck my life. Let's go do Episode 3. Um, so we went and recorded, recorded the first bit, it was great, it was super funny, uh, we are both just, you know, pumping the gags out, as, as I do guys, I can't help it, I'm a bloody gag machine, you know, I'm spitting out fucking comedy like it's no tomorrow, so, uh, it was great, and then it gets to halfway, and it goes, up. Oh, uh, SD card full, uh, blah blah blah, because I've lost a couple of SD cards recently, and I've been so busy, I haven't gone to get new ones, and it's, it's a problem, I need to like, get that little shit done in my life where it's just holding me back and then so I was like oh fuck so I got up halfway through the video and then on the camera started deleting old footage that I didn't need now never a good move uh people who maybe film a lot uh do lots of editing and stuff no that's an error because your fingers slip easy you shouldn't delete stuff on the camera you should put it into your computer work out what you want sort through it there uh didn't do that I was in a rush trying to get this video done. So I started deleting all this all the old Bachelor footage from the past episodes and the Bachelor Edition tape and stuff that was that was on the SD card, clogging it up. Then I get to the end and I've deleted everything. I'm like, oh shit. I deleted the first half of the video that we just filmed in the process. So we'd spent half an hour filming already. We're about, you know, 20 minutes into the episode, and I was like, Great. It's deleted now. Awesome sick 
What's that? Cool. Super cool. So, I spend the next hour going, what to do? Meg's like, come on, let's just refilm it. I'm like, no, you can't just react to the same thing again. It's not going to be natural, blah, blah. She's like, Luke, it's not a big deal. We're watching The Bachelor. It's not the end of the world. And in hindsight, very good advice from Meg. Telling, telling it like it is. And I don't know if this says more about me or just like, I don't know if I'm like OCD or I think I just, I honestly think it is. I take pride in my channel and my content so much more than I really should. I am like a perfectionist and I just can't, I don't know, I can't separate, I don't know what it is, but in my mind, everything has to be as good as it can be. And we said some hilarious shit at the start. So I was like, no, I can get this footage back. I know there's such things as data recovery software. If I put the SD card in now, I could probably retrieve it. So did like half an hour research online. By the way, this is like 10, 11 p.m. at night by this point. So I'm tired. I've been up. I've been editing for 10 hours already today. I'm I'm exhausted. And really, I should have just gone to bed at this point. We shouldn't have even filmed episode three. I should be in bed having a well-earned sleep, you know, because I've got a headache. I look like shit. You know, I've got bags under my eyes. And you know what? I bet you that's why I got a bung foot now, because my body's like, fuck you. And then it's just trying to keep me in bed. So it gives me a bung foot so I can't walk. So it spent, I spend $100 on data uh, recovery software. Great. That's, that's fine. I was like, you know what? I might need this in the future. Not a bad thing to have on my computer. I'll just spend the money. I'll admit it was a spontaneous purchase. But I did it anyway. So... Retrieved the well. Uh, long story short, I don't want to bore the people who aren't into technology and shit. But I retrieved the video, so I was like, "Great, phew, thank God." Meg, let's keep filming the video. Then I w go to start filming the video. I'm like, "Oh no, no, I haven't actually retrieved the proper file." So I retrieved the files, came back. Now the files, because they've been deleted, are corrupted. So I spend the next hour and a half. It's now midnight trying to uncorrupt these video files, looking up ways to do it on the internet. Then I find this website that costs money. Costs $115, or so I thought, to uncorrupt this video file. Now, how much footage was it, Luke? It was 18 minutes of footage. Most people would be like, no way, that's ridiculous. I can refilm 18 minutes of footage. I'm not most people. I, by this by this time, I'd, I'd already spent $100 trying to get this footage back. I was like, well, I've come this far. Now if I refilm it, it feels like a waste. So we so we finished recording the rest of the video, right? We finished about 1.30, 1.45 a.m. filming this third Bachelor video. And, and I was like to Meg, I was like, let's just keep watching it under the assumption that it's... Uh, good now, like, 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 like that I've fixed it and whatever, and I'll get it fixed during the week. So, go to bed, 1.45, so we finished at 1.45, ended up going to bed at like 2.30, 3 a.m. again, have to get up early the next morning to do Luke and Lewis, because we record on a Monday to get the Tuesday episode up in time, uh, so, you know, drove to the warehouse early, didn't have any time, we were busy all day Monday doing Luke and Lewis shit, then Monday night, I go, I had a gig, right, after Luke and Lewis, at this point, I'm running off, like, five hours sleep, I've been working for 10 hours again, doing Luke and Lewis stuff, then I go to a gig at night, drive to the city, and then on the way home, I have a mate who's, like, a tech whiz, does anyone else have that mate when their computer fucks up, that they just have one guy to call, like, okay, here's the thing, I consider what I do a business, right, and in order to separate it from my personal life, so I don't know, so I don't go clinically fucking insane. In my head, I'm like, oh man, Luke Kidgel HQ has had a rough week. He that business has really, really been thrown under the bus and and destroyed this week. But but Luke Kidgel, the non-business, the person, has had a great week. You know, he's been working hard. But that's okay. In these downtime, he's tried to teach a dog how to pop a shack. Was unsuccessful. But you got to try these things, okay? Luke Kidgel, that's fine. So in my head, I was like, you know what? Let's go to Luke Kidgel HQ's tech guy, which is my mate Stefan. 
one of my best mates from high school. He's a tech whiz. He's a guru. He is a wizard when it comes to nerd shit, right? He bloody hacks. He works for a gaming company. He codes. He does all that little blah, 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 and like he's, you know, you, you know those guys are like, and then they click enter and like, enter and then it's like error error and he goes oh hang on i'll just fix it that's like his life he goes for a living so i was like you know what let's get that guy and he'll be able to fix my problem because he'll just be able to be like with his fingers on the keyboard and fix that shit great easy sounds good so i give him a call it's after my gig about it's about 9 p.m i was an early gig thank god so i'm driving home from the city and i was like yo Tech whiz, blah, blah, blah. what up, Stefan? And he's like, hey, it's like whenever I call him out of the blue like that, he's like, what's wrong? What fucked up? Because he knows. He's he's built me websites in the past. He built my first ever website. He helped me set up all my merch store online. Like before my pride management, Stefan was pretty much running all my online shit, right? Because um, he's a legend. He's a good bloke. So I call him and, and, and he just starts pissing himself off. And I'm like, yeah, I told him what happened. He's like, you're a fucking idiot. I was like, yes. He goes, yep, I reckon I can fix it. Come over on the way home and we'll give it a go. So I go, get Stephens at 9.30 p.m. Now, he's a tech whiz. He has other stuff to do, right? He's got a life. He's got a job, right? He's got to be up early for the next morning. Then I'm at his house, not paying him to fix my shit, right? And he's, you know, so we're having a catch up, but he's going, two and a half hours later, Burr. unsuccessful he tried everything and i mean everything he tried for two and a half hours to fix this one bit of corrupted footage so i talk tell me about this website i'm like it's 115 dollars to fix this fucking thing i've already spent a hundred i'm going to spend another 115 on top of that so it gets to the point of the night where he's just like mate gonna have to do it so I go on this website, that they fix corrupted video files. At this point, I'm thinking, I'm insane. Should have just refilmed it. It's not worth it. And I know, and you know what? When I cut it together, it's only going to be two minutes of footage in the video. So, I go, $115. Goes to the pay now page. What's that? 115 US. Sick. So now it's going to cost me one hundred and ninety three dollars to fix 18 minutes of corrupted footage not to mention the hundred dollars that i've already paid by the way i don't make that much on videos okay i make maybe like 30 40 dollars a video so it's not like i'm gonna pay it back off this one video so i was like fuck i've come this far okay i spat on my microphone that's okay not the worst thing that's happened to me this week Fine. So I'm I'm in I'm thinking this is insane. I'm spending a two hundred and ninety three dollars to get eighteen minutes of footage back that may or may not be funny because we filmed it at eleven p.m. By this point, I've just come. I'm so deep in this shit. I've spent two days trying to fix this. So much money. I'm just like fuck it. I just want to get it done now. So like a madman, like a deranged man, man. I just type in my credit card details and go my name my Jeff, and then just buy that shit. Okay, and now it's bought. Money comes out of my account. I'm like, my life, right? I just censored myself because I don't need to swear. Okay, I'm trying to cool down. Get the footage back. You're thinking, oh no, Luke, it didn't work. No, the footage, it kind of half came back good. I reckon they recovered 40 minutes of it. The last three minutes is still fucked. Okay, it's unusable. So I paid a lot of money. They kind of fucked it up, this website, because the file was so corrupted. They managed to salvage 40 minutes of the 18 minutes or something like that in HD. So I was like, fine, good. That's a lot of money to spend on not a lot. And now I've spent bloody half my time editing this video. So now when you guys watch this next Bachelor review, please know how much effort, money, time of a lot of people went into this. Because Lewis and I also tried to fix the file for a bit as well on Monday. So yeah, the footage where I'm wearing the grey hoodie at the start, as opposed to where I'm wearing a t-shirt at the end of the video, or the footage where I'm wearing a grey footie, oh, a grey footie, I can't even speak anymore, I was wearing a grey footie, oh my god, a grey hoodie, right, watch that like it's pure gold, because it's almost worth as much, that footage, that footage is worth more than probably anything I've ever put up on my channel, I don't think I've ever put that much money into a video ever, so guys, I'm trying to make this Bachelor series work, I'm trying too hard, 
Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, there's been a lot of hurdles along the way, but that's okay. I'm, I'm pushing through it and, oh, I'm sorry if that story wasn't interesting to you, but God damn, I had to get off my chest. I feel better now, actually. That's good. Whew. Guys, let's get into something a bit more, a bit more joyful. Okay. A little bit more. Ooh, you know, um, let's do a quick rendition of the first ever segment of Whoop. Bachelor Scoops. I forgot to get an intro. I forgot to make one. Didn't think about it really before then. So that's the intro now. Do Bachelor Scoops. All right. Today on Bachelor Scoops, guys, this is a segment where, um, obviously, I'm a big fan of The Bachelor. Most of you probably know that by now. My favorite show. Um, and everyone loves a scoop. I love reading hot, juicy goss. That's why, I, that, that's why I follow the, you know, I don't follow real news. Like I didn't even hear about that Jeffrey Epstein shit for like 24 hours after it happened. But God damn, you know, for a fact, I read all the bachelor goss on Mamma Mia that day. I didn't miss it. Didn't miss a thing. So this is bachelor scoops. Now, obviously I'm not going to repeat any goss that all the news websites are posting. Why? Because I don't want this podcast to be a second-hand goss center. That's not what we're about. We're about breaking news, telling it like it is, giving you guys hot scoops that no one's ever heard before. And here's how the segment works, and here's how, hopefully, you guys can help me in this segment. Now, this segment might only last for a week because we may not get another scoop, but I have a hot scoop. Uh, this one came in from uh, Nick... Uh, Spelt N-I-C, which, you know, probably should chuck on a K to that name, big boy, but that's okay. Uh, appreciate your uh, correspondence, Nick. Sent me a message on Facebook and said, Hello, Chief. I know you're a big fan of The Bachelor. Uh, oh, by the way, I don't mind Chief. Like, I, I th- think some people view Chief as condescending. Like how saying champ is fucking rude. You know, if, if you call someone champ, that's that's pretty low. That That's, you know offensive if, if like i got champed um by my girlfriend's dad once like really early on the, in the relationship meg's dad was like oh can you pass me the tomato sauce champ and i felt belittled i felt humiliated in front of the whole table and um you know and it doesn't feel good but chief i think some people view chief as the i i don't i think chief's chief's quite uh you know positive and it's you know, it, it's confidence boosting. I kind of don't mind being the chief. So if you guys could pretty much address all correspondence from here on with something like, hello, chief. Hey, captain. Uh, what's up, Sergeant Luke? You know, oh, Lieutenant Luke. Maybe we could do that. Just something that makes me feel bloody chuffed about myself would be great. So uh, thanks, Nick. Hello, chief. I know you're a big fan of The Bachelor, but I just thought it could be very valuable for you to know that Ali from the show was my roommate in 2015. So if you want some goss or ear an inside scoop, let me know. Uh, So I hit him back going, Nick, hey, Chief, uh, would love love a scoop, would love some goss. And he goes, oh, I've got some pretty solid rumors about what place she comes on the show. And I was like, no, 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 no. Nick, that's not what kind of scoop. Mate, I watch the show, okay? You don't don't need rumors to work out who's going to come top three on that show. Um, I was like, give me some real scoops, Nick. You're a, you're a housemate. I was like, okay, what, what does she have for breakfast? So I asked him, what does she have for breakfast? Thinking, I'm like, dude, this will be a hot scoop. Is it cornflakes? You know, is it baked beans? Is it, you know, like, what is it? You know, like, is it, oh, it might be like big breakfast. She might go to the effort at home. Is she a pancake fiend? This is the kind of scoops I want. Um, so guys, the first, uh, bachelor scoop that, no one is reporting, and I'm telling you this, you will not hear this from anyone. This is straight from Ellie, uh, who's one of the girls on The Bachelor this year. This is straight from her ex-roommate, Nick. This is some exclusive shit, only exclusive to memoirs of a white guy. So, guys, he said, I can't remember what she had for breakfast, but... And it was so relieving for me to hear that but, because I went, oh no, (gasps) he's still got something. Now... Before I read this scoop, I want to say that often scoops are scandals. Often scoops are unhappy. Often 
they're not positive. I'm not trying. I'm not saying this is a good scoop. I'm just saying it's a scoop. So you you can take it how you will. I'm just giving you the information. It's quite a sad scoop actually, but it's still exclusive. So I can't remember what she had for breakfast. Nick said, but my mates killed her childhood dog by feeding it vodka cruises at her 21st birthday. Probably not the type of scoop you're looking for. And I was like. Look, it wasn't. I was looking for what she had for breakfast. Sorry, the camera died for the people watching and the people listening. Nothing changed for you. Anyway, uh, no, I wasn't looking for that kind of scoop, Nick, but it's good. You know, it's it's, uh, unfortunate for a childhood dog and it shows you have shithouse mates, but fuck me dead, that, that is a batch scoop. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the first episode of... Batch scoops. Bing. Um, the intro slightly changes every time. It's part of uh, the segments appeal. So yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, and the way you guys can uh, contribute if you have another batch scoop. What I'm looking for is people who know one of the girls personally. Can you give? So it's, obviously, these girls are real girls. You know, I. I'm not allowed to say really, but one of my mates has dated one of the girls on this year's season before, but I don't really have any scoops. You know, I haven't sort of spoke to him about it. So I, I, I think I only met her like once. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, the point is these girls exist. They're out in real life. These are real life people. So it means surely I'm hoping this podcast has a wide enough reach where someone you know or you personally has been in contact with one of these girls before, and surely you've got a scoop that news.com, pedestrian TV, Mamma Mia, that none of the mags or or the online news articles are reporting. We want exclusive batch scoops because I I need people to come to this podcast for batch scoops. You know, this is... This could really be a turning point for the podcast and its appeal. You know, you get them... I need to hit that extra batch market who just come here for the scoop so if you guys want to help me out with uh, a batch scoop that'd be great so yeah if you guys know one of the girls personally if you've met her before say if she came to you into a cafe once that you work at you know save uh who's a girl on the show um your abby or rachel came in uh to your cafe once maybe they ordered a latte but then didn't you know or or they ordered a hot chocolate but didn't want a, a, a marshmallow that's a scoop you know that's something that the people aren't reporting. So, yeah, if you guys could give us uh, scoops about the Batch Girls uh, that are exclusive to this podcast, and you need a promise. You need a promise to God that it isn't exclusive and that you haven't also sold this information to any of the other mags, okay? Because I can't report on that because that's secondhand news. That's recycling. That's not what they're about. We're about breaking batch scoops so yeah guys uh luke.kidgel at gmail.com if you have a batch scoop would love to hear it during the week if you know one of the girls now um i think we should do pump up songs so uh yeah let's let's do it it's time for the ultimate pump up song championships the ultimate pump up song countdown slash tournament i don't want to get Copyrighted. All righty. Uh, last week was an, or two weeks ago, was an absolute landslide. We had uh, Holding Out for a Hero from the Shrek 2 soundtrack uh, playing off against Lil Jon's Turn Down for What. And boy, oh boy, uh, you would not want to be Lil Jon right now. He would be, ab- like, he got belittled. He got belilled, if you will. He he would feel like the lillest John currently because he got beaten so convincingly 77 percent to 23 percent uh he got beaten by on instagram youtube came in very similar 76 percent uh to 24 percent so another absolute shellacking and then uh the facebook group poll in the memoirs of white guy facebook group came in pretty much just as bad so yeah i'm sorry Lil john but you know Maybe stop just yelling so much random shit in your songs. May- Look, maybe I didn't help that by pointing out all the song's flaws, but man, it got absolutely... Like, it, there's really... You, it's, you can't argue with, with uh, how much it got absolutely just smoked by Shrek 2. Um, and I'll be honest, 
I will admit, it surprised me a little. I thought holding out for a hero would get across the line. I didn't realize by how much. I kind of thought holding out for a hero uh, in sh the Shrek 2 version would be maybe a bit of an outsider in this competition, a bit, a bit of a wild card, an underdog, but proving after that hectic win, uh, maybe it's a contender. Now, I do worry about its next round because uh, now we only have two more two more rounds of what are they called? First, first, two more first rounds to go. We have uh, Lose Yourself versus Final Countdown, which we'll do this week. And then the next week, we have the big one, the main event. You know, the uh, you know, these have all been undercard matches, really. Next week, we have the Rocky theme versus Fat Bottom Girls. So I've been saving it to the end. I, I, someone messaged me going, Hey, Luke, you're scared. And I was like, What do you mean? He goes, you keep putting off doing fat bottom girls, but you can't keep putting it off forever. And I was like, dude, I'm not scared, man. I just know how to build suspense. I'm a fucking drama queen, dude. I'm, you know why? You know I'm a drama queen? Because I love the band Queen. And that Freddie taught me how to be dramatic. And Freddie wouldn't have fucking just, oh, I'm just going to do like the, the most climatic like event, you know, the the, most, the best matchup in the middle or early. Nah, -ha. you save that shit for the end, okay? So for everyone, anyone who's saying I'm scared, I'm not scared. I know, and I know there's a lot of other people out there who deep down know what the ultimate pump up song is. Okay, it doesn't worry me that it's yes. Is it going up against one of uh, arguably the best pump up songs of all time? Absolutely. The Rocky theme is really not to be reckoned with in a competition like this. One would think the Rocky theme would be an absolute favorite, you know, an Ellie or a Chelsea, if you will, if you've been following The Bachelor. You know, one who's like, well, she's making it through to home visits. You'd think that the Rocky theme would make it through to home visits, even maybe make it to the finale in Thailand or Fiji or whatever tropical fucking bogan place they decide to shoot The Bachelor this year. You know, I would say the favorites early would have been Lose Yourself, Rocky theme, uh, shot through the heart, or you give love a bad name by um, Bon Jovi. Um, maybe even Thunderstruck. You know that there's a and oh, not to mention obviously Fat Bottom Girls. But there's a there's a lot of big hitters in this competition. It's not called or oh, the All Right Pump Up Song Championships. It's called the Ultimate Pump Up Song Championships. This is the once and for all decider of what is. The ultimate pump up song. All these people, all oh, you're scared. I am playing fucking games here, okay? This is the one part of the podcast that is not a joke. Like this right now, people go, "Oh, Luke's being ironic." Does it look like I'm fucking kidding? Does it sound like I'm kidding? If you're listening, fuck no. I'm not scared, okay? I, I'm not scared. Is not the right word. Am I nervous? Sure, I've got some butterflies because I'm excited to win, you know, and it's not me winning. I'm excited for Fat Bottom Girls to get what it deserves and to be crowned as the ultimate pump-up song. Do I want to influence this competition? Absolutely not. Vote. If you think Rocky's better, vote for Rocky. You know, I'll just disagree with you forever. You know, I might come to your house, find you, you know, you know, have a chat with all your friends, threaten you. Stuff like that, but I'm not going to influence this conversation. That's competition. A good year. Uh, this competition. But yeah, I've had a few messages. Just it's and it's really disrespectful. You know, I'm I'm here. I am trying to host this event week in week out, doing God's work. Really, um, deciding a thing that not not a lot of people have that have the time to decide. But I'll I'll put in the effort. I'm doing the hard yards. Why do you think? I've got this whiteboard for. This took took me at least 10 minutes to make this whiteboard, which means I'm taking this seriously. So, um, yeah, Rocky Theme vs. Fat Bottom Girls will be up next week. And I'm not scared. I'm a little nervous. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. And, I, and I'm confident that people will vote with their hearts, listen to the two songs, weigh them up evenly, and in the end decide that the um, ultimate pump-up song is Queen. But until then, uh, this week, guys... Lose Yourself versus The Final Countdown by Europe. Two ultimate pump-up songs. Um, if you don't know, the, uh, ultimate, the, the Final Countdown is the song that is the intro 
to this ultimate pump up to this ultimate pump up song championship. It's not to be reckoned with. I wouldn't dismiss it beating lose yourself. Um I will admit I I put it up I you know it happens to be where it fell in in the draw it happened some someone you know what I mean it's like any draw someone has to verse the favorite lose yourself has to be up there in the top three um, by Eminem it's slow start but it's all about it's literally about being being the best not missing an opportunity seizing the moment and um, one opportunity. One of the best, like, start to a run songs where you just, like, it's, like, foggy and you're just, like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to get it done, you know? This is how I felt where I was, like, I was trying to teach a dog how to shack and I was, like, I can do this, you know? It's, I can, any, anyone can learn how to shack. You know, maybe not a dog because it doesn't have hands, but I was, like, that's cool. So I was, like, all right, man, just pop it. Like, just pop it. And the dog was just looking at me, like, what? And I was, like, that's okay. Just, just keep yourself in the moment. All right, lose yourself, dude. It's so good. Step back to reality. Up the girl's gravity. Up my name. Up Eminem. Um, yeah. So it's, I would say, from the movie Eight Mile as well. It's one of the heavy hitters in this comp. So it's lose yourself versus one of the best eighty. I think it was eighties. Uh, versus Europe, the final countdown. Absolutely, I would say this song has epic vibes to it, you know, like a real, the intro, ooh, more like climbing Everest type pump up song, like, fuck yeah, let's make it to the summit, more like the sum what, cause that ain't shit dude, I'm already there, mmm, oh, and then it kind of gets into like a more, so yeah, two absolute, uh, absolute weapons in this competition. And I'll be honest, I don't know. I think just could, mainly because I have a younger demographic who's generally voting in this competition. That's the only part about this competition that may be slightly rigged is that like probably people might favor Eminem because they're more familiar with the song. But, um, you know, there's still a lot of love for the old tracks out there, clearly, with some of the other songs that have got through. So, you know, yeah, vote with your heart. And as always, guys, may the ultimate pump up win. All right, let's get it done. Lose yourself versus the final countdown. Whew. It's making me kind of like, I don't know, nervous to think about, like, just how exciting this competition is getting. Because I feel like there was a bit of a lull there, you know, we are doing, like, Oh, all I do is win, DJ Khaled. And you, you're kind of thinking, and a bit at everyone's mind was probably like, well, let's be honest, these songs aren't going to be here come finals time anyway. So what the fuck is the point of voting? But it's about the journey. And now, this is why I've saved some of these big matches till last. Because this, this week's one is going to be huge. One of these songs could even make the grand final. Um, and what will be interesting is, Lose Yourself, if you're looking at the board here, uh, and if people have been looking at it on the Instagram, you'll notice that Lose Yourself is on the other side of the draw to Rocky and Fat Bottom Girls, so there might be a point in the competition where both of those meet and play off against each other, and fuck, that's what, that's what I guess this is all about, you know, that's what we all keep coming back for, and that's why we vote, because fuck, I'm inspired, I hope you guys are too. Um, yeah, what else do I want to talk about this week? Oh, I guess we've got to, got to do a few knocks, and then we'll probably, uh, probably wrap it up soon, guys. Um, let's do some, do some knock knocks. Who's there? So if you don't know, uh, the best way to contact the podcast and have me, uh, see it is, um, the Nokia phone, um, which is the official podcast phone, and if you want to, uh, the, the phone number, j- jump on the Patreon, and, uh, I, po- I regularly post the number in there to remind everyone, what it is, um, so yeah, if you want the knock phone number, support me on Patreon, that is the only way, uh, I can afford to do what I do, um, and buy data recovery software, and I I seriously, uh, really appreciate all the people who do, um, support me on there, because I pretty much don't make any money, really, at all, out of, um, I spend most of my money on the videos that I make out of the videos, and, uh, so yeah, people on Patreon, uh, you guys are legends, and I appreciate it, alright, this first one comes in, on the knock, uh, hey Luke, not after advice, but was just thinking, 
You know, if comedy doesn't work out for you, you could always become a teacher. All the Specky McGee books you could ever read in the library and more tambourines uh, in the music room than you could shake a tambourine at. You got to deal with feral kids, but mate, think of all the Specky McGee uh, sent by Anonymous. Not sure who sent that is, but uh, maybe that's a good career option. I don't know how I'd be as a teacher. I think... The, my problem and a lot of things in life is I'm too honest with people. Like an eight-year-old kid would walk up to me and be like, look at my look at my drawing. Do you like it, Mr. Kijul? And I'd be like, no. I fucking hate it. I wouldn't put that anywhere near my fridge. Okay, only the good shit makes the fridge. And that's terrible. What, what's that, a son? Yeah? Looks like a bloated asshole. Fucking get better and try harder. Stop drawing bloated asshole sons, dude. You know, and that would be my problem. I have no um, what's the word? Oh, empathy. No, uh, what's the word? Oh, not being an asshole. I don't have that in me. It's just who I am. You know, and I'm not gonna change being me for some eight year old kid who can't draw. I'm not gonna change warp my whole personality because he's shit. That's not on me. You know, try harder. I would have appreciated that feedback when I was eight. You know, uh, excuse me, um, uh, Mr. Smith. Um, I don't know why I talk like that. Do you like my, my, uh, my, uh, my painting? And if it had been like, what's that? I'm like, oh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a son. Yeah. It looks like a fucking asshole with hemorrhoids on it, champ. It's bloated. It's swollen. And to be honest, I can't work out if it's a son, you know, or, or a bum. And I would have been like, oh, okay. Th- thank you for that feedback, Mr. Smith. And it would have been like, no worries, champ try harder, and the next time, you know what, probably would have, bit of tough love, I think these kids are getting, getting away too easy, my dad found, um, who is a teacher, by the way, <laughs> so, uh, he, 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 he's a lot better teacher than I would be, um, he, he came home from school the other day with, uh, this cane, right, and he goes, he goes, what do you reckon this is, and it looked like, hmm, what's the best word for it, um, a sex toy, and it had like a little knob at the end and it was, and I was like, I, I don't know what that is, but God, I hope you don't use it on the kids. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, he goes, no, no, we, we, we do use it on the kids. And I was like, right, w- w- what do you use it for? He goes, well, this used to, he goes, this was a pointing cane. Uh, and he goes, he goes, we found it the other day in one of the storerooms at the school. And he goes, he goes, teachers, when they had the chalkboards used to use it to point, but he goes, but was also used to discipline them as well. He goes, when we were kids, the teachers used to hit us over the knuckles and shit with this cane. And I was like, that's crazy. Like now, if a kid, imagine if these days, like a full grown adult with adult strength got a wooden cane. By the way, this thing had some, this thing had some weight behind it as well. Just went whack down on some six year old's knuckles. That would be on the fucking news. That would be like teacher goes to jail for assaulting a kid when back in the day, the principal would pat him on the back and be like, good on your champ. Did you tell him his painting was shit as well? It's like, yeah, mate, gave him a smack on the knuckles, told him he was shit at art. Like, good on you, mate. You deserve a promotion. That was how teaching was. And you know what? I think we need a bit of that because, man, whenever I hang out with kids these days, I'm like, you suck. I always want to just want to say to the kid, I'm like, you, you're terrible. Like, not all of them, but most kids. Oh, do you have any games on your phone? Do you have any games on your phone? Oi, do you have any games on your... Da Whack! Am I encouraging assaulting children? Technically. Only assault a child. <laughs> Ooh, real. I've got, I've got to tread carefully here. <laughs> Only assault a child if he had it coming, or if he sucks at art, or she, you know, fuck that, you know, like, oh, you wouldn't hit a girl, fuck, man, I'm, the, that's sexist, okay, of course, if the chick was shit at art, you fucking bet, man, whack, 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 boom, get out of here, that's, that's fine, uh, I've been doing this bit lately on stage, I don't want to spoil it, but <laughs> it's a bit the kind of similar premise to what I've just been talking about, but I have this bit about kicking kids, uh, and I, I talk about how I want to live in a utopia where you can just punt a stranger's kid. And I'm hoping I get it good enough to be in my show next year. But it, this year is like the first year I've been trying to do... Not like... It's not edgy. It's just like... 
it's just like a dangerous, it's a sensitive topic. Like people, especially old people who have kids really fucking hate it when a 23 year old gets up there and starts talking about punting their child. And I'm like, calm. Firstly, it's a fucking joke. Okay. I don't, you shouldn't No, no, you should not hit kids, obviously. Right. But it's funny. And it's, and there's a few good gags in there. And I have this bit, this, this woman came up to me. She was like, I hope you don't think that, uh, oh, fuck, it was funny, what she's like, she was like, she was like, she was like, I like that bitch, because I thought it was fine, but, um, and it's so funny to me, by the way, that people think that I want their feedback, like, people think that I'm gonna, like, a stranger comes up to me, and like, oh, he's gonna want to hear my feedback on this joke, it's like, firstly, I don't, I don't care about your feedback, all right, my feedback goes on, if the audience laughs, good joke, if the audience doesn't laugh, bad joke, if one person comes up to me and goes, <clears throat> um, um, so um, before I get on Twitter, I just want to tell you this. Blah, 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 blah. I would just be like, ah, eat a dick, you know? Fucking, I want to hit you and a kid now. So, um, you know, this lady comes up to me, she's like, <laughs> uh, she's like, I-, I liked the bit. I didn't have a problem with it. But she's like, <laughs> obviously, you wouldn't hit my daughter, right? And I was like, no, that's fucking, I was like, I was said to her, I was kind of funny. There was a, there was a couple of other comedians nearby, so I was just like, yeah, it'd be funny if I kind of just lean in. And they were listening, so I was like, "Of course." I was like, "What?" She's like, "What?" I was like, "She's like, you'd hit a girl." I was like, "I'm like, you think I wouldn't?" I'm like, "That's sexist." I, I'm like, I'm "Like, what? You want you want me to treat your daughter differently because she's a girl?" And she's like, "Well, no." I was like, "Well, that's what you're saying." And I was like, "Man, I'd fucking drop drop punt Tinkerbell if she was being a bitch, okay?" And like, it, it was part of the bit because I talk about how I want to hit it, it's. I will admit, with no context, this doesn't sound great. <laughs> but in the context of the joke, it's pretty funny, right? Because I, t- I, I give a reason as to why I wanted to kick these kids. These kids were being shits around me, and I was like, God, they need a fucking punt. Anyway, so, uh, so that I'm, probably, I'm thinking of maybe adding that to the bit of this girl's conversation, because I just think it's hilarious that she actually came up to me, and she's like, I just want to check that you weren't... And by the way, now, I wanna, I've never kicked a kid, would never kick a kid, it's a joke, right? For those who don't understand, because there are people on the internet who suck, uh, and it's, you know, occasionally some people who watch my videos, it's most of you get it. It's comedy, right? No one wants to hit kids. And even when you go to see a stand-up show like mine, you shouldn't come up to the comedian and be like, eh, eh. I was like, hey, firstly, do you not realize it was a joke? This is actually what she did. She came up to me. She said, obviously, you wouldn't hypothetically kick my daughter, I was like, why are we even talking about this, I wouldn't hypothetically, I wouldn't kick anyone, but hypothetically, yes, it's funny, because it's a joke, anyway, fucking hell, I was just, that made me sorry, shit like that makes me mad, people come up to you like, <clears throat> just can't. you're like, shh, shut up, it's a joke, I'm so sick, oh man, I'm so sick, about every time I, this is why I don't go on Twitter, because there's all these comedians just getting like, flamed, for, for not even, for doing material that's not even edgy, anymore like usually like it, you like even two years ago it was like someone does a rape joke or a pedophile joke and people get mad and and you can understand how people can get offended by that you know and that's kind of territory that i wouldn't go into personally as a comedian um but it's like you can totally understand the offense but like recently i've been seeing all these american comedians get in trouble for just shit like that's not even like I, I, I heard the joke, and I'm like, wait, was that the joke they got offended by? I'm like, I say worse shit than that all the time, and it scares the shit out of me. And it's just like, oh, man. Anyway. So, yeah, punting kids is fun. I don't know how I got into that rant, guys. I'm sorry. But anyway, no, I wouldn't be a very good teacher. <laughs> if it can conclude that uh, whole point with anything, it's that, guys, I don't think I'd be suited to be a teacher, but you're right unlimited specky mcgee books but to whoever sent that in uh you probably don't know me very well because at my house i also have unlimited specky mcgee books because i bought them all when i was a kid um but yeah that made me mad and um i oh mean i really want to try and finish that bit um soon so i can do it at a show like i don't know it's just anyway whatever it's not your guys concern i've I'll, I'll finish it. And uh, if you come to my show next year, hey, I might have a good bit about punting kids. I might not. Who knows? <laughs> so, um, it's a work in progress. Uh, this next knock comes in. Uh, Luke, mate, how do I come out to my friends as a Bachelor fan? Ooh, tough one. Tough one indeed. 
Uh, how I did it was kind of like a, I didn't really have to, you know, I give off kind of vibes that I, you know, I wear long sleeves pretty confidently. I, uh, I often play with my hair. Uh, sometimes I do this <laughs> in conversation. I kind of give off bachelor vibes. Like, oh, this guy probably watches the bachelor in conversation. So, or in conversation, what? This guy probably watches the bachelor in his free time is what I meant to say. I think I have a headache, man. My bung foot is getting to me. How, it depends, man. I mean, I never had to come out because I'm just a pretty open guy and I was like, fuck yeah, I love The Bachelor. If your friends are not accepting Bachelor fans, maybe you could be like, oh, I, I watch it ironically, but everyone knows that's a lie. We all watch that shit for the plot. We all know what's going to happen and let's be honest, we all get sucked in a bit and there's always a part of you while watching The Bachelor that's like, I wonder if I'll have a, like, I wonder if I'll ever have true love like Matt and Ellie, you know? There's always a part of you. So, I think just be open to your friends, man. Uh, maybe get them into a room, get your parents there, get the whole family around, and be like, um, so, I've been thinking about this for a while now, and um, I don't want you guys to see me differently as a person. I'm still the same person. I just like to do different things on 7.30 on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and that is to watch Channel 10. And then your dad goes, oh. and then your mum quickly gets the TV guide, looks up what's on at Channel uh, Channel 10, 7.30, and she goes, <laughs> <laughs> I, I accept you for who you are, but I just didn't see this coming. I thought you were more a master chef, chef kind of guy, or like maybe like the block, or even worse, like, my kitchen rules, I just, oh, it's like, you know, you watch one season of Married at First Sight, and then you just get sucked in, and that's okay, and that's my fault, because I had Married at First Sight on, and I just want to let you know, sweetie, that um, whatever TV shows you watch on a Wednesday at 7.30, we'll be there, in the ad breaks, of course, because I don't want to watch that shit, but we'll be there to support you. And you're going to be like, <laughs> and everyone's crying, hugging, you know. But like, this is what exactly what we should do. So take notes, whoever sent this in. Um, and yeah, you're hugging, crying and stuff. And then, and, and then that's how you initially come out. But then how you make them properly accept you is, you know, try and make it fun. Be like, oh man, you know what's great about the show? Osha, isn't he handsome? And your mum might be like, oh, he is handsome. And, and then your friends who you've come out to as well are going to be like, yeah, I mean, Osha does have a great fade, good fringe. Maybe there's more to this show than I first thought. And then slowly, you reel people in like the fucking devil that you are. This is what I did on this podcast. You reel people in. And then, sure enough, we live in this fucking utopia where everyone is following The Bachelor. It's the water cooler chat at every workplace. And it's kind of the utopia we already live in. It's a great great time to be alive when, you know, we're up to season seven of The Bachelor. It's such a standard now. People have bachelor parties. That People have sweeps. It's like the Melbourne Cup, but it goes for 10 weeks. It's actually, I would say, I reckon in five years' time, Batch Fest might become a thing where, you know, it's like the Melbourne Comedy Festival goes for a month where just, you know, the streets are alive and, it, you know, the, the, the town's buzzing because of Bachelor Goss. That's, that's a world I want to be in. And I think one person coming out at a time, we could all achieve that together. Um, I hope that helps. Guys, thank you very much for listening to the podcast. I'll have to leave it there because uh, I do uh, need to go finish editing and we've been going for pretty much an hour now. So, yeah, guys, I uh, hope you enjoy the episode three of The Bachelor because it wasn't cheap. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening to the podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, if you want to knock me up, send uh, that through on the Patreon. And, uh, yeah, if you have a batch scoop for me, you know, one of the girls would love it if you hit me up, uh, cause you know, we, we all have a batch scoop, let's be honest. And, um, yeah, I think that's it. Hope you guys have had a good week. I'll see you next week. Yeah. So